Good morning. What a wonderful day for us to be together again this morning. And we thank God for his faithfulness for giving us or extending our lives to this day. And he who has given us this day also has already released all the graces and the help that is needed for us to live a godly and holy life and thus glorify our God. And so, my friends, let us live to glorify the Lord. And so let us give ourselves just a few minutes meditating on God's word for, before we begin our, our daily duties. And today we are going to meditate on the Lord's prayer that he taught his disciples and then to all of us. Jesus left one single prayer as an example upon which to base their, the, the, the disciples' prayer. Several of his prayers are recorded in the New Testament. But only once he said, after this manner you pray. The prayer is recorded in the Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 6 verses 9 to 13. And I want to read it for you. Uh, here we read chapter 6 reading from verse 9. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, here on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you... Sorry, then he goes on to explain uh, the one condition that we all must keep in order to pray and expect God to hear our prayer. That is, forgive uh, anyone whom you need to forgive. And so here is the prayer. The first ten words of this prayer provide the believer uh, with a biblical foundation for commencing all prayers. Prayer should begin with a season of praise. The prayer begins, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. The goal of all praying is summed up in the expression, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be is a New Testament expression used only in reference to God. The Greek word for hallowed is hagiazo, means to revere, or to sanctify, or to set apart. Since sanctify means to set apart, time should be set apart solely and strictly to worship God. And this we should always keep in mind when we approach God and his throne in prayer. God must be set aside as the object of a devotional worship. Praise and worship is a way of life. Uh, the chief end of man is to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. Praise help a believer to achieve this goal. Brother Lawrence, a 16th century monk, wrote, The end we must ought to pursue is to become in this life, the most perfect worshippers of God, we can then possibly be as we hope to be through eternity. Because always remember, worship is a heavenly activity. Prayer is an earthly activity. Once we are with God in our eternity, there will be no prayer. Everything else that we used to do here, there will be no preaching. There will be no 
uh, no ask, prophesying, speaking in tongues, etc. It's all gone. But there is one thing that will never cease even in heaven. That is worship. And that is why when God's people sincerely filled with the Holy Spirit and worship God in spirit and in truth and in the beauty of holiness, there is such a joyful uh, presence of the Lord that we all feel. And where God is, anything can happen. Amazing things, healings and deliverance. And people are so filled with the joy of the Lord as we give ourselves to worshiping. It is because it is a, a heavenly activity. My brothers and sisters, uh, what we are going to continue to do in heaven is this worship. Let us not hesitate to worship him here and now because then we are engaging ourselves in a heavenly activity. And uh, praise is a vocal adoration of God. Adoration of God is the act of uh, uh, rendering divine honor and love to God. And so we must always remember the object of our, our adoration and our love and our worship and uh, all these things, it is God and God alone. No one else is worthy to receive that honor. The word adoration is derived from an ancient expression on which uh, um, expression which meant to apply hand to mouth. In other words, hand kissing, kiss the hand. Now kissing the hand is a symbol of uh, deep respect and submission to the uh, one's authority whom we are worshipping and adoring. Adoration brings man into immediate and direct contact with the Almighty God. Always remember, before we do anything else, praise is first. Praise puts God in His rightful place and position. In uh, in, in, in uh, uh, praising God, we declare His sovereignty and recognize His nature and power. Another reason why praise first is the fact that in its very nature, praise is unselfish. One of the greatest value of a praise is that it decentralizes self and centralizes God who is worthy. Hallelujah. The worship and, and, and the praise of God demand a shift of center from self to God. And a divine adoration is spiritual. And it is a spiritual health as well. Because it changes our focus from self to God. And as long as we dwell on self, we not only become selfish, even in our prayer, we become self-centered, which will not do any good. We need to be God-centered. And that's what the real praise does. The praise sets a victory on course. Praise brings the glory down to earth. When we read 2 Chronicles chapter uh, 5, verses 13 and 14, let me read that passage. This is a very significant uh, passage which teaches us a very unique lesson. 5, verses 13 and 14. The trumpeters and singers joined in unison as with one voice to give praise and thanks to the Lord, accompanied by trumpets, cymbals, and other instruments. They raised their voices in praise to the Lord and sang, He is good. His love endures forever. 
Then the temple of the Lord was filled with the, with the, with the cloud. And the priest could not perform their service because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the temple of God. Did you notice one thing there? Very important. Notice this passage. Solomon prayed a dedication prayer for the temple that he built for the glory of God. But it was the voice of praise which brought down the glory of the Lord and filled the temple. Hallelujah. And here is, here is the lesson for us. When we come, the worship. Now, worship is not earth-centered. It is not self-centered. It is not centered on anything else. Worship is God-centered. It is heaven-centered. And it is, it, is, it is all about God. And that is the importance. And... Uh, uh, and uh, notice when the, the temple was filled with the glory of the Lord so that even the priest could not perform their priestly uh, ministry because of the cloud, because of the glory of the Lord. Praise, and it happens when they lifted up their voices in singing praises unto God. Praise and worship sends Satan running. How? Listen to this. How is God comes to sit among the praises. That's what the Bible teaches us. God comes sitting among the praises of worshippers. And so if you want to experience a real genuine presence uh, of the Lord God Almighty himself, Learn to worship Him with our whole heart in spirit and in truth and in the beauty of holiness. And in such worship, God comes down and sit among the people who are worshipping. And Satan simply cannot tolerate God's presence. That's how he runs away. Where true, genuine worship goes on, Satan takes to flight. Let me read to you Psalm 22, 3. Psalm 22, 3. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the praise of Israel. Hallelujah. God is the praise of the church today. God Almighty is the praise of everyone who loves Him and who acknowledges Him as Lord and Savior of their lives. And the greatest things that people of God can do here on earth is worship this God and then proclaim His gospel. And these are the two things in the midst of which God dwells and does his mighty works. And therefore, my brothers and sisters, let me encourage all of you here that we be true worshippers and grow in our worship and enjoy worshipping this God who alone is worthy to be worshipped and no one else. Our God is an awesome God. He dwells in an unapproachable light. And the glory fills the temple when God is present. Remember, it is, it is your worship and the sound of your and the voice of your worship that brings God down where you are and reveal himself and his glory. And I pray that we will not um, uh, downgrade the value of worship. That is the greatest valuable thing that you can do here on earth, that you may enjoy the presence of God. You want to bring God down into your room? Fill your room with the 
holy worship of a holy God. In your family, let your family be a place of worship. Give him glory and honor. And the Holy Spirit will enable you. He will anoint your worship. And as the worship goes down, his presence comes down. Let it be your experience today. And I pray that you shall be a great worshiper of God. That makes you a man after God's own heart. That is one of the qualities of David. Why he was a man after God's own heart? Because he worshipped God. God bless you as you change into a great worshipper of God. Hallelujah. And I say amen. God bless you and have a great, wonderful day. You can worship wherever you are. Amen. We will continue this tomorrow as well.